Good evening, everyone, or afternoon, or night, or wherever you're watching this at. Um, I got a letter. Uh, my name is Heath Haskins, Code Primate. I got a letter from uh, one of Hope's teachers, my daughter, and it says, Heath, I was wondering if you would be able to help my fellow teacher and I with this. I know coding is your area of expertise, but I thought you probably would have some opinions about the impact, pros and cons, of video gaming, especially for a growing middle schooler. Would you be able to send me a video, one to two minutes, explaining your expert point of view on this topic? I've added a formal email request below. Miss... I almost said a name. I will try and leave all names, locations, and stuff out of this. Uh, Miss <laughs> and I uh, so appreciated having you come and speak to the students earlier this year. So many of them mention it often. They loved getting to hear from a real YouTuber. <clears throat> if you are busy or cannot work this into your schedule, I totally understand. Just let me know. Have a great day. <laughs> Here's the official details for more of the email. Blah, blah, blah. So, yes, I will absolutely do a uh, video. And I'm actually going to post it to my channel. So hopefully I get some views for it. Ah! <laughs> this double-edged sword there. Sorry. Um, so what I'm supposed to be talking about is a topic. And uh, I am supposed to address, address the importance of said topic. And please use your opinion of said topic. So, with that being said, I'm not going to be looking up any facts or figures or anything like that. Let's get started. I'll get you some background music going. Uh, and by the way, this music is provided by The Fat Rat. Um, he creates music online for video gamers and YouTubers. Copyright free. So, gaming. Pros and cons of gaming. First off, pros. All right, it gives you hand-eye coordination. All right, and that's been one of the biggest um, aspects, one of the biggest arguments for the longest time. Um, next, it gives you troubleshooting by figuring out puzzles and completing quests and a mission of accomplishment. Um, some games don't do that. They strictly have um, fight and battle and win. But for the most part, it does give you a sense of accomplishment. It gives you uh, a sense, a purpose, uh, a motivation for moving forward. Um, the other pro of it is there's a lot of online games now. So there is a social aspect to video games where you can actually meet people and become lifelong friends with someone. Especially if you and that person are not worried about race or religion or color of your skin or background or heritage or any of the other things that make the stereotypes of today very common. Because when you're online, you don't have that same aspect. It makes um, socializing very much better, in my opinion. Uh, a couple other things, it gives you critical thinking. Um, the ability to make a living online, if you wanted to. It's an entire new aspect of sports. There are so many pros, and I am pro gaming, if you didn't already know. Oh, by the way, the background is uh, free from wallpaper play. <laughs> free downloads, uh, support them. <laughs> Sorry, I've got, I've got to throw these out there because they're, they're little disclaimers. So, uh, cons of gaming. There are some cons of gaming. A lot of people will let um, gaming take over their life and they'll start to neglect normal everyday activities such as taking care of yourself, eating, going to the bathroom. These things happen and it's because you become too involved or too enthralled by it. Uh, some of the other cons are with the online aspect. Um, there are people who are very much negative and they will talk trash. And these are middle schoolers who are trying to tell me that I'm trash on the internet. I've been playing video games ever since I was three years old. I don't need to prove myself. So why would you take... I guess the, the, the anonymity behind the, uh, the screen name and the ability that you're across the internet for some reason it gives you it gives people the thought that they can um, talk a certain way to people and it's that's not good um, there's also the um, yeah the anonymity behind it there there's a stereotype that goes along with it um, people don't take gaming seriously 
a lot of places still consider gaming not a profession. They consider it not to be um, a real job or a real thing. I still have people to this day who meet me and they're like, oh, you're a YouTuber, that's, that's kind of cool. And then they find out that I play video games like Roblox and they're like, well, when are you gonna grow up and, and do um, like real job stuff? I do. I have a real job where I am an application development analyst and I program uh, websites and pages and tools. I have a real job at a real place and real location. But because I have that gaming aspect, people tell me all the time in my comments, go get a real job. Go get a, go, go grow up, go be this, go be that. No, that is, that is a stereotypical thought. That is a mindset that people still have to this day. Uh, I still get a lot of cons of people saying that I'm too old to be playing video games. And that's something that you're gonna have to deal with. That's one of the cons. Uh, something else that is a con is it is looked down upon as far as being a real sport. Um, Esports is a very real thing and there's a lot of money to be had, but at the same time, not everyone's going to go and become a YouTuber or a streamer or a gaming professional because if everybody were able to make money at playing video games, nobody else would watch. You wouldn't have viewers. Um, but that's, that's pretty much the pros and cons of the gaming. I will push past the topic and go into ethics. Ethics about video games. Um, there are a lot today a lot of people today who will use mods and exploits and injectors. There is a huge flaw to this idea, this concept of exploiting online. There's a terms of service that you agree to on most video games and they don't allow you to look at the code or modify the code from its original state. It also violates copyright laws. Now with that being said, stuff like Minecraft mods. Minecraft mods are no longer looked down upon. And in fact, there's a, entire channels that make their living off of doing Minecraft mod Mondays and stuff like this. The point is, um, it is not ethical to change the code, to go and download an exploit, to um, try and cheat or get an advantage in a game. It is unethical and you shouldn't do it. Uh, next part about the ethics is video games copyright laws. There are a lot of emulators and a lot of ROMs that you can go and download nowadays. And I've, I'm guilty of it just as much as everyone else is, but it violates copyright law. It's commonly done, but they're not enforcing it. The, the law is not able to catch up to the technology. Technology is advancing faster than laws can keep up. Um, with the digital millennial copyright laws, wait. You see me? It's a, it's a it's the copyright laws of today. They do protect that you cannot make a backup of a video game. The websites that host most of these things are not held inside the United States that recognizes the copyright law. These servers are overseas, so you have to make an ethical decision. Are you going to copy and steal a game just to play it uh, and risk actual jail time or fines and fees? You shouldn't. That is an ethical question that you're going to have to ask yourself. It exists. It's out there. It's something that we should uh, we should all address. Um, next level of importance: gaming should never take priority over something that you are neglecting in real life. And I don't want to say that in the wrong way because gaming is real life. It is very much an aspect of life. Um, I make sure that my family's taken care of first. I make sure that I've got a job, that I've, I make money for my family. I make sure that my kids have their homework done, that my wife is, is um, happy and, and if she needs anything, I'll stop what I'm doing. If she comes out and talks to me at this exact moment, I would pause the video and address her first. It should not take priority over something. The same thing goes with sports. If you are um, neglecting to feed your dog because you wanted to go and play football game, there's a problem. Or if you're neglecting to clean the house because the Sunday uh, game is on, that's a problem. There, there's a certain, like you should make sure your stuff is done before gaming. Make sure that your family's taken care of before gaming. Same thing. Um, as far as level of importance, 
um, it's going to be looked down upon by the like by other sports announcers, people, people who just don't understand the gaming scene. Um, a connection to a real life scenario. <laughs> I, I kind of did that. Uh, I mean, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Code Primate. <laughs> the uh, the ability to take real life scenarios. Okay, so. In Fortnite, the World Series Fortnite tournament that happened, there, the kid that won, I think he was 13 or 14 years old. He may have been 16. I don't know the statistics. These are coming from my opinion. Again, not looking them up. He won 3.2, 3.1 million dollars. Okay, and there were newscasters who were making fun of him. They're like, well. I guess he, it, it just kind of makes me mad that uh, I've been doing this job for 10 years and here he comes just playing a video game and makes $3.2 million. Do you know how much time and effort that kid had to put in? Do you know how good he is? There is, if you look at the normal player versus what he can do, there is training, there is time, there is effort, and there is aspect to what he does. And it's not accredited. It, it is very much looked down upon. It is, it is criticized, and I'm I'm really against it. I'm really against that kind of aspect or that kind of, of mindset that people have. Um, the tennis tournaments in the female division, there were four point something million viewers. Uh, in the men's division, there were three point something million viewers. And those players were paid a good 10 to 20 million per person. Now the Fortnite tournament had over 10 million viewers. That's more than both the men's and women's division of tennis as far as viewership, ad space, television, publicity. And the, this kid only got 3 million. I don't find that fair. That is very much a real life scenario. Still the, still the fat rat, but that's not the song I was on. Very much the same idea, the real life scenarios. And I hope I've not gone, I've gone 12 minutes over my time. That's okay, I'm gonna keep going. Um, give examples. No, those were examples and real life scenarios. Stereotypes. There are stereotypes that say, um, like e-gamers, uh, e uh, gamer girls are very much looked down as a lesser gamer group and they shouldn't be they are just as good as as the the male gamers um there's also the stereotype that gamers are young people and if it weren't for the boomers making the technology and i know I, i'm going to use that term very loosely because my mother was a boomer my dad was a silent generation i am a millennial slash generation x i'm just I am not a boomer okay even though you like a lot of middle schoolers have called me boomer <laughs> that's not true I'm not a boomer um, but if it weren't for the boomers creating the technology that we have nowadays you wouldn't have the Twitter or the social medias that you have or the internet to get on there and post about a boomer <laughs> so thank you to the boomer for for paving the way for us for us gamers because when I started, it was 1984. I was three years old. The first game I played was a Coleco. It was, it was an Atari ColecoVision. And the graphics were horrible. I mean, I don't even know if they were 8-bit yet. So, um, the stereotype of a gamer is they, they've got to be these uh, unclean, unwashed geek nerds who um, sit in their room all day long and have no social life. Very much not true nowadays. That, that is not the stereotype, that, that is not the type of gamers of today. Gamers are, are people, and they are all over the place. Streamers are very much, there's this ideal that streamers and YouTubers make billions of dollars. We don't, and that is another stereotype. This, this idea that if you're a gamer uh, who can make a living online, it's going to solve all your problems. It won't. All right. In fact, I would encourage you to have a real life job. And that sounds so horrible. That sounds stereotypical. That would be considering like a gaming 
job is not real. It is very much real. Um, having an in-world game instead of a, or in-world <laughs> job instead of a virtual job um, would give you the experience and the appreciation of what it takes to do YouTube, to do streaming, to do gaming for a living. So with that being said, I'm going to conclude it and say thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity for me to speak to you and to give the, the class, the students, the internet. If you're watching this and you're from my channel, thank you for being here and listening to me and, and having me go off. Show this to your teachers. Share it with the classroom. You have 100% no copyright on this uh, video and share freely. Copy it, download it, do whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to release it under Creative Commons. Love you guys very much. Have a great night. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Do all those cool things. So call out like a good YouTuber does at the end of the videos. And again, thank you so much for the opportunity. Outro.